Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Tuesday, August 20th, 2019 Market Watchers Live show with your hosts, Tom Boley and Aaron Swinlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. Taking a look at the market action today, um, not a whole lot going on. Uh, we haven't really, I guess, maybe come off the earlier lows, but for the most part, right about where we opened this morning. Dow Jones currently down 44 points, the S&P 500 down 7, the NASDAQ down 11. Russell 2000, again, taking it on the chin on a relative basis, down a little more than seven points. Ten-year Treasury yield drifting back to the downside. We had a couple of days moved a little higher, but we are right back down today, another four basis points, back just below 1.56%. Volatility index continues to drift lower, currently trading at almost an August low, or at least since the second day of August. Uh, move below 16 would be very bullish there, currently 16.94. Uh, consumer discretionary leading to the upside today. We are in positive territory here and also in technology. Those are the two uh, solid areas of the market. To the downside, we've got materials, financials, and consumer staples. And you can see in particular, consumer staples uh, had uh, overhead resistance right around that 61 level. So we're seeing sellers come in right where they came in back at the end of July. Uh, the home improvement group having a very strong day today mostly on the heels of Home Depot, which is trying to make a breakout. You can see Home Depot up currently about 4%, maybe a little over 4%. The Home Improvement Index also having a strong day. Home Builders, look at the breakout here. This is a very encouraging, of course, with interest rates continuing to remain low. This is a group that uh, benefiting for sure from those lower rates. And then finally, one uh, really solid report, Medtronics came out overnight, uh, or actually maybe it was this morning, with uh, earnings and revenues that beat expectations, they raised guidance, and they're part of a very strong medical equipment group. So I think Medtronics is a stock you want to keep an eye on going forward. All right, Aaron, it is Tuesday. How's it going? It's going pretty well right now, just trying to stay cool. Found out uh, my dad sent me an email that I'm in the middle of a severe fire zone right now. So trying to stay cool. <laughs> well, I tell you what, my putter was on a severe fire zone fire zone back on Saturday. I saw that post. Yes, I played in the golf tournament and shot a 68. I have nowhere, no idea where that came from, but uh, it took me back about 30 or 40 years back in my high school days. And my partner was hoping that uh, I would continue to live in 1979 on Sunday, but I didn't. I returned back to normal, <laughs> uh, unfortunately for both of us. <laughs> It Those was, are the kind of games that keep you playing because you want that game again. Yeah, it was fun. And I, I, just everything was kind of working out. I played well to start with. And then the putter, man, I was just on fire. You reminded me when talking about that fire. That's exactly what happened to my putter. <laughs> but anyway, I know we got a busy day today. You got a big workshop coming. So uh, what do we got going today? All right. Upcoming schedule tomorrow, we have Danielle Shea here from Simpler Trading. Can't wait to talk to her. Rick Ben Sr. is going to be here on Thursday. Tom, you got a workshop next Tuesday. And then Jesse Felder will be joining us on Wednesday of next week. Today, yes, I will be doing a workshop. I'm going to do it on sector rotation. I was pretty shocked I didn't already have uh, one of those. So I put something together for you. Talking technically it actually happens to be one of mine on the PMO. And then the 10 and 10, our first symbol will be overstock.com. So let's go ahead and get started, Tom, with the technical news and headlines. All right. There were no uh, economic uh, reports of significance. So let's just jump right in, take a look at the 10 year Treasury yield. And it is under pressure again to the downside. This slope down in August has been pretty severe and uh, really not getting much relief. We get a day or two and we saw back maybe the second week of August had one little pop back to the upside, more movement to the downside, had a little bit of a pop last two days. Now we're going back down. Of course, anytime you see the 10 year treasury yield declining, it means money is rotating into treasuries. There's always that inverse correlation between treasury prices and treasury yields. So when the yield's going down, it's just telling us folks are looking to be a little bit more conservative, maybe moving to safety. Maybe it's an issue where the treasuries around the globe are so low, the yields on those are so low that people are just pouring into the U.S. There's a lot of different possible explanations, but bottom line is these are dollars going into treasuries that are not going into equities. And uh, I think that's what's leading to all this uncertainty in the stock market, not really being able to sustain the move to the upside. It's because a lot of money keeps pouring into treasuries. 
All right, as far as earnings go, and there's still a number of earnings reports coming out. You can see here Baidu, great report there. They did gap up earlier. Maybe we can take a look at that one in a bit. Um, Fabernay, uh, FN, they did beat on the bottom line, but they uh, issued some, some poor guidance going forward. And Medtronic, as I mentioned earlier, really big report there. I thought that was uh, probably the best of the bunch that came out. Well, let's uh, pull up first Home Depot. So we'll take a look at this chart and see what is going on here. Make sure we got the latest price action, but it is trying to make this breakout. There was the double top in July, made a big move up here over the last few days. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't gotten through yet, but today's still young. We're up four and a half percent. Kind of surprising here because Home Depot did miss on their top line. A uh, nice beat on the bottom line, which was good, but then they guided their fiscal year 20 revenues lower and cited the tariffs uh, as one of the reasons why they were expecting revenues to uh, maybe come in a little below expectations. I think they're still looking for an increase in revenues uh, in the next year, in fiscal year 20. I think that they, they were just lowering a little bit. So still expecting uh, a bump off of 2019. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, well, I'm going to pull up that Medtronics and show you what I was talking about here. First of all, I think this stock was really just kind of mired in this little slight downtrend for a while. Notice the volume back in May that was earnings related broke that downtrend. And I think that turns out now, especially looking back with hindsight, that's a character change on the chart. Maybe didn't look like it, you know, that much back then because we didn't take out these tops, pulled back, but it did hold that gap support. And look at the volume in June as it made this push to the upside. So I think it was already starting to show change of character back then, continued moving higher. Even with the pullback in early August, you can see Medtronics really didn't pull back much and then started rising into its earnings report and now got the good news today and uh, absolutely exploding here. They beat on their top line 7.49 billion versus 7.41 billion. They beat on the bottom line buck, buck 26 versus buck 18 and they guided both revenues and earnings higher um, as we look forward. So forward guidance there, very, very strong. And what I really like about this stock, number one, you can see medical equipment stock going higher. You can see on a relative basis, medical equipment stocks, one of the strongest areas over the last three or four months. And now you've got Medtronics, which over the same period, three or four months, has been outperforming both the S&P 500 and its peers. And with this earnings report now clearly breaking out to about a seven or eight month relative high versus the its peers and to a 52 week high relative to the S&P 500. Nice volume coming in. This one would be on my radar. I think this is a good looking stock as we go forward. All right, uh, I mentioned in Fabernet, Fabernet, not sure how you pronounce it. I put a little French twist on it. Uh, but FN here, big move to the downside. They did beat top line, they beat bottom line, but they lowered their guidance going forward. So they lowered their quarter one revenues and earnings per share. Stock moved back down here to about a two month low, big volume. And when I looked at the relative strength, the relative strength among its peers was actually pretty good going into this report, but its peers was not, uh, its peers were not doing very well relative to the S&P near a 52 week low. So if there's one thing you don't wanna do is be in a bad group and lower your guidance. And I think that's what's happening here. Stock down 16%. I don't trust it at this point. I would certainly be staying away from FN. Let's pull up Baidu. Baidu, of course, reported. A lot of folks like to trade Baidu. What's that look like on the chart? Um, maybe improving. We, we may look back at this one kind of like I just did with Medtronics and say this was the turn on the chart, but this is a, a stock that's been beaten up really badly. So you just don't know if this is maybe just a little oversold bounce. I think I'd annotate this just for a second and show you an area that I would watch for. I think you've got gap, very serious gap resistance right in here on this huge move down on heavy volume. Notice the reaction high. We could not get back through about 123, 124. So I think we've got room back to the upside here, but I'd be really careful because I, this could just be nothing more than just a quick bounce because of the oversold conditions, because the stocks dropped so much. Um, if we can get back through the mid 120s, then perhaps it'll start to have a little different flavor. Also watch the relative strength. It's coming up a little bit here, but look at how badly it has performed versus all the internet stocks out there. Not been a good performer. So yes, we're getting a couple good days, 
It's going to take more than a couple of good days, though, to get me interested in the stock. All right, let's take a look at TJX. Another company, another company here that uh, reported um, not good numbers either. They missed on top line, they matched on the bottom line, and then they guided their next quarter earnings per share lower. You can see the stock gap down, but it is holding its price support. So if there's one positive here, I would say that 49 level, I'd watch it really closely. Anything below that, I would be out. This has been a pretty good stock relative to the apparel retailers. The problem is the apparel retailers are at a 52-week relative low to the S&P 500. So it's just not a good – it's it's not a bad stock, but it's just in a bad place. And then when you come out and you lower your guidance, I'd watch $49. If it breaks that level, being part of the apparel retail group, I would have uh, very few excuses to offer up here. I'd keep a tight stop. Okay, Kohl's, KSS. Um, you can see the big move down here over the course of the last few months. The stock was not trading well heading into this report. They did beat on their top and bottom line, but look, they're not getting a very good reaction here. As the stock turns lower, I think that's a bad sign. The stock has been underperforming its peers, the S&P, for quite some time. They have good news, and they still can't seem to get things going. Until they get back up above their moving averages, I wouldn't even consider the stock, and I would be watching those recent lows. Don't want to see another breakdown there. All right, I mentioned uh, home construction earlier with the low interest rates. Here is that breakout, and I actually put this in my article from today and talked about this area, and I think I was thinking maybe we'd get a catalyst from the uh, from Toll Brothers, which reports after the bell tonight, but if we go down here into the sector industry watch area, I had put this in here. I was watching it because this is a key area of resistance where we've seen price action fail on multiple occasions. Back to the downside, you can see we've been in this range from about 775 up to about 845 or so. Um, but today we are getting that breakout. You click on this chart, it'll give you the update right there. Here is that breakout that we're getting. So that is good news. The other thing I would just mention is if we look at Toll Brothers, um, you can see a couple things here. Number one, Toll Brothers going sideways hasn't really been one of the best stocks, but I thought uh, this was interesting. I mentioned it also in my blog this morning that when we look at seasonality for Toll Brothers, last 20 years, look at August, averaging, gaining 5% in August, and it's clearly been one of the better months of the calendar year. The only month with a better return has been November at 5.4%. So this is a, you know, Toll Brothers comes out after the bell, could get another boost uh, if Toll Brothers can beat its expectations later today. We'll see. All right, let's move on. We're going to go back to that uh, dashboard. Let's take a look at the rankings here. And, of course, it's not there. But I'll show you how you can look this up. I'm going to go over here to the scooters. And I'm going to go to the mid cap. I'm going to pull up the change. And I should find Zynga down here. Here it is. It just fell out of the top 10. But you can see it is up 10 points to 72.6. And if we pull that chart up, actually, I have an annotated one. So let me pull up the annotated chart. And when you look at uh, Zynga here, um, you can see that the stock number one is trying to get back up uh, above this price resistance area. Uh, that will be an interesting um, that'll be interesting to see whether or not we can actually make that move because the scooter has fallen. Uh, if you look down here, you can see on a relative basis, Zynga has lost support versus the toys group and toys starting to come off the bottom in terms of relative strength, but they have not been very good in 2019. So you got a stock that's starting to break down in a group that's not so good. So even though the scooter is moving to the upside, I personally would be really careful. I think this stock's got some work to do to prove to me that it's ready to regain its momentum and move back to the upside. So that's why I've got it today as my scooter mover of the day. And uh, we'll be right back with Aaron's workshop on sector rotation after this brief message. Miss the live show? Want to rewatch a workshop? Tune into the Stock Charts TV YouTube channel to catch up on the latest programming and content. All of our live shows, workshops, special guests, and more can be found there. Each category has its own playlist, so it's easy to locate. 
We even have chart school and creative strategy videos to help you become a better technical trader. Leave comments for our commentators, like your favorite videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, we are back. I'm going to be doing my workshop today on sector rotation. I did have a request for that from the survey notes. So always be sure and fill out those surveys because we do read them. And I actually took someone's advice and decided to do sector rotation. So let's first start off with uh, what we're gonna talk about. So obviously I'm gonna tell you about the definition and then I wanna go through the different ways that you can look at sector rotation. And then depending on how much time I have left, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to scan a sector or sectors with some of your favorite scans. So let's go ahead and first take a look at what is sector rotation? Well, sector rotation is sort of the typical movement of relative strength among the various um, sectors that we do have, okay? So there's the um, 10, 12 there. We started with, I think, 10, now we're at 12. Um, but we'll go through and look at which ones are the aggressive sectors and defensive sectors, because depending on which one is doing uh, better than the others relatively to the market, that really gives you an idea of where the market probably is headed. Um, for example, if you have a rally on a defensive uh, sector or sectors, if that rally is being carried by those defensive sectors, then you're looking at a sign of market weakness more than likely. And when you get those rallies uh, that are led by the aggressive sectors, usually that's a really nice sign of internal strength. And a lot of times it's going to confirm that uh, you will continue to see higher prices. All right, so let's look at what sectors are what. Um, at this point, uh, what we have determined, and things are constantly shifting, but at this point, we've, we consider uh, the aggressive sectors, number one, to be technology. And I think that's a pretty obvious one. That's where you have uh, you know, all of your Amazons and, and uh, all of those uh, groups and stocks that really tend to lead the market when you're going through them. So consumer uh, discretionary would be the next one, also known as cyclicals. That's of course your um, extras, the consumer, when they have extra money, that's what they spend their money on are these consumer discretionary uh, restaurants and bars or you know, the, the department stores and that sort of thing. Communication services actually was pulled from, uh, mostly from the technology area, that sector. So it tends to also be on the aggressive side. A couple of others that you may not consider are materials and energy, and those are sort of right in the middle of uh, financials as well. You sort of see the uh, change when they start to go through. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. The defensive se sectors tend to be your consumer staples. This is your toothpaste and uh, beer, which apparently is a consumer staple. And those are the ones you're gonna find Coca-Cola in there. These are the ones Procter & Gamble. So these are the ones that everybody's gonna always need. Utilities, you're always gonna need utilities. You wanna have you know, air conditioning or lights in your house. Healthcare, everybody's gonna need healthcare. Real estate tends to be an area that is considered defensive as well. Now, I do wanna say that healthcare and Greg Schnell <clears throat> excuse me, mentions this in his book, uh, Stock Charts for Dummies. If you haven't gotten that, that is in the Stock Charts bookstore. But one thing that he noted is that with health healthcare, it used to be highly defensive. But you know, now that we're starting to see the biotechnology area in there, some of the pharmaceuticals that are in there, they're, they're kind of a, a more aggressive. You know, Let's face it, we watch those biotech stocks moving up and down all the time, very volatile. So while health, healthcare is still in that defensive area, it's not quite as defensive as it used to be. So let's look at the actual rotation and what it tells us. So I'm gonna start over here. Now, when you're looking at, and this is uh, really telling you what's going on with the economy, um, where you are as far as the strength of the market based on the cycles that you go through. So technology and uh, transportation, this area, you start to see the cyclicals 
um, coming into play, late contraction, early expansion. But these are the ones that uh, start off that really nice rally. Then you start to move into the industrials. Um, you've got basic materials and energy that come in through the middle of the expansion. Then now we're going to start to see a little bit more defensive areas as we get later into the market rallies. You've got healthcare starts to to lead. You start to see consumer staples and utilities leading as the market's starting to contract. And then the next ones you want to start watching, uh, we're really paying attention to that financial services sector because that's sort of the next area that you want to see growing um, so that we can get back here to the expansion phase. Right now we're, we're seeing a market that's rather volatile and has, uh, you know, not we're seeing the rallies a lot of times on the backs of these consumer staple stock we want stocks we want to start seeing movement in the financial sector and then move on into the consumer cyclicals now this you can find it on uh, stockcharts.com if you just go to the um, chart school and look up sector rotation you're going to find this and you're also going to find it um, beneath the uh, perf charts and the other um, charts i'm going to show you when we get further along but this really gives you the same sort of feel that that other one did uh, however this one does include oops communication services well we're going exactly the wrong way here all right. So as you can see, technology and consumer services discretionary, all of these are listed here on the left. Those are your aggressive sectors. And then notice you start to move into those more um, defensive areas as the market tops. And that's what we're seeing right now. Staples, utilities, healthcare, real estate, those are all starting to lead, uh, but the market is topped and it is starting to move lower. Why I wanna see financials start to do better is because that's when we're gonna start seeing that move, hopefully to the upside, uh, when we start seeing those areas growing. But this is a great chart to give you a feel for what's going on in the um, economically in the US, but also looking at what the stock market's doing. And it gives you an idea of and one of the reasons you want to study sector rotation is a lot of times it's going to help you uh, determine which part of the market you are in, what part of the rallies you're in, are the, is there internal strength, is there um, internal weakness, and you need to pay attention to that. But it also helps you determine which areas you may want to trade within. Uh, typically, you know, the market's moving lower. Uh, you may not want to be in the market as deeply, but if you are in the market, you may want to spend more time in the more defensive sectors of staples and utilities, like I said, real estate. This is actually a picture I took just before we went on air. And as you can see, we are rallying today and we are rallying on two of the aggressive sectors, discretionary and technology. So that uh, really kind of confirms this rally uh, as a little bit of a stronger rally, just because we're seeing the aggress aggressive sectors leading it. However, right behind that are three defensive sectors. So uh, you have to temper your excitement, I guess you would say, uh, based on that, that we're really seeing kind of a, um, in general, but all of them are moving in, in a similar way. Now, the other thing you can note is our stock charts technical rank. I didn't, um, I did not uh, sort on it, but it, you can see which ones are leading right now, which ones have the highest scooter value. Look at, we've got 97, 94 for real estate and utilities, 93. So wh who has been the strongest? Who has been leading this rally? All of these defensive sectors are the ones that are leading, and again, that was a clue that we were starting to see the market topping. And that's also a clue that there's still some weakness maybe to have, that we have to work out in the market. Now there are a few ways you can look at sector rotation. I just showed you one looking at that uh, sector summary, but you can also pull up a perf chart. Um, this one is from 2003. This was an example that was in chart school. I decided to put it up here because it just fit on the chart very well, but I will give you some real-time looks 
at a performance chart, but it tells you within that period how uh, what the percentage gain or loss has been uh, on that in, rel in relation to the S&P 500. And so you can see that relatively we're seeing the strength over here in discretionary technology, industrials and materials. And those are your more aggressive sectors, of course. And then those are the ones that are sort of your movement into uh, materials, industrials, that's leading you into the next uh, phase. So, uh, it, you know, an interesting setup, there's your staples and healthcare and utilities. All of these are not doing as well. And again, these are your defensive sectors. So in, during this time frame, you could make the, um, you know, you could analyze it and, and say that, okay, all these aggressive sectors are leading. That should be confirming the rally that's starting. All right, relative rotation graphs uh, as well. And Julius de Kempner, who is the uh, founder creator of RRGs. Uh, we are the fortunate um, home to them on stockcharts.com. But what he does is using the benchmark of the SPY, uh, you can get these. Um, hold on just a second. I need to. Okay. I don't want the frog in my throat. All right. So relative rotation graphs. These are, and, and it actually is literally showing you a rotation of these sectors and where they are in relation to the benchmark, the SPY, which is your center point here. So as you can see, um, as this is current, I took this picture also right before I went on uh, air here to discuss this. And as you can see, here's your healthcare. It is in the proving sector, but it is moving toward the lagging or weakening area. Which ones are starting to pick up strength? XLC, the comm sector, it's now leading. And you can see it's continuing to move in that northeast direction. That's in a, a, a more aggressive area of the market. So seeing that rising in the proper direction, that's good. Look at XLK, also rising and starting to get into the leading category. That's, again, what we want to start seeing are these more aggressive sectors moving into that leading care category. Look which one is losing a lot of steam. XLP, the staples, while they are in the leading category, they really are starting to head toward that area, um, toward the weakening uh, quadrant. So you can make some assumptions, uh, take your analysis to the next level by using the relative rotation graph. All right. The next one is using candle glance, and I adore my candle glance style. I will show you how you can set it up real quickly when I go give you an example. But uh, I have my candle glance style to set up to see the 20 and 50 day EMAs and to see my price momentum oscillator on the bottom. So I get to see not only the momentum portion of price, but I also get to see the price trends using the 20 and 50 day EMAs and where they are in relation to each other. So looking at this right off the bat, which ones uh, have the 20 day EMAs below their 50? Well, industrials have been uh, suffering. Materials trying to make a comeback here. Some of that could be attributed to gold having a uh, pretty great uh, time lately, but we can see that uh, energy showing a 20 below the 50. Uh, financials still have that 20 below the 50. Healthcare has started to decline and we saw its 20 day move below the 50. So as far as price trends go, your areas that uh, are stronger, which ones have the price trends going the correct direction? Technology right now still has its 20 above the 50, albeit just a very small margin there, but it still is. Staples, look at the margin between the 20 and 50 day EMAs. That's telling you there's some strength just by looking at the price trend. Real estate as well, look at that nice uh, margin between the 20 and 50, and you can see the nice rise that we're getting there. Utilities, again, another defensive sector. The 20 is well above the 50 day EMA. So three of the sectors where we're seeing some really good margin between the 20 and 50 to the upside are utilities real estate and staples. And those are your defensive sectors. Now what's going on as far as price momentum? And I look at the price momentum as more of a, the, the 
The EMAs, the moving averages, tend to be a lagging indicator. Uh, they tell you what's, what's happened, not necessarily what's going to be that well. Uh, so I like my um, PMO because I can measure, measure momentum and then see where the strength is building in each of these sectors. And as you can see, we have strength building in healthcare. We're getting ready to get that um, crossover. Notice where we already have crossovers to the upside utilities, real estate, and staples. So momentum is continuing to be on the side of these defensive sectors. That tells me there's still a lot of internal weakness going on in the market. So despite rising prices uh, today, at least uh, when I looked last, uh, we had some rising prices. They're, they're coming on the backs, as we say, of those defensive sectors, and that should give us some pause. But just by looking at this, we can see which ones are starting to pick up steam, which ones are starting to fail a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, industrials, materials, you can see those PMOs are flat or are actually turning down. I like the fact that we're seeing on consumer discretionary that move to the upside as far as the momentum goes. So we might be starting to see some improvement in discretionary, which of course is one of those aggressive sectors. Uh, still rather flat for comm services, technology. We are starting to see a little bit of a move to the upside and it has maintained a lot of its uh, upside trend with the 20 still being above the 50. So there is a lot of information just on a candle glance. I think it's probably obvious now which one I like to use <laughs> for sector rotation analysis. It would be my candle glance, mainly because I can see those indicators that are important to me with my decision point analysis. Another way you can look at um, the sectors and, and what's going on with rotation is uh, using price relative. And this is a, a chart that's similar to what uh, my partner Tom Boley uses quite a bit. And you can look at how the price relative of consumer discretionary to consumer staples. So probably one of the most aggressive areas of the market versus one of the most defensive areas of the market. So when consumer discretionary, that aggressive area of the market, if we're starting to see relative strength there, we tend to see a confirmation and a rally uh, continue. When we start to see some failure in that price relative, of course, back here would be a really great example where we lost that relative strength area of support, uh, kept moving down, and that was telling you that consumer staples relatively were getting stronger than discretionary, and that's a warning that the market is showing some weakness. And here's another great example of that. Relatively speaking, you had uh, discretionary on the rise when it started to flatten out with this um, price relative, and we started to see it turning back down. Again, another sign that there was some problems. And look at where we are right now. We had this decline, and of course, staples started to do much better. Uh, than discretionary, and we actually have made another low that we haven't seen. Uh, it went past our May low as far as the price relative is concerned, but it looks like we're starting to see a, a turn here. We'll want to look and see if we can continue to see a rise in this particular uh, relative ratio, and that would give us a little bit more of a sign that uh, the market internals are starting to get stronger. All right. So I'm gonna move on uh, to scanning a sector or sectors. Uh, I think those are, are quite good uh, to look at. And right now, um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go right to um, my scanning workbench here, but you can get to your workbench if you are uh, a member of Stock Charts, of course, uh, right here. You can get to that uh, advanced scan workbench. And what I thought I would do is take one of my um, scans that I end up having. Uh, let me see here. Let me get this back. Okay. I was going to take one of my scans where I get a, a large number of results typically. So here is the one that I get usually get a lot, large number of results. I'm looking for bullish uh, EMAs, meaning I like to have the faster EMAs on the top. Uh, so you can see that right here, the 20 being above the 50, the 50 being above the 200, because that tells me right off, of course, that there's, uh, it's in an uptrend price-wise. Uh, I then like to see my PMO rising for at least three days. 
I want a scooter between 70 and 80. So I'm going to run this scan and this is only looking, this is looking at a giant universe. I want US stocks that have a simple, a 20 day simple moving average of their daily volume to be 300,000. So we're talking about a lot of stocks uh, to get some results for. So I'm going to run the scan and we had 67 results. Uh, you know, I had somebody send me an email and said, do you run the scan every day? And because sometimes I get, a, I end up getting duplicates, I run it every day. Well, I do not run it every day. Uh, I tend to run it maybe once a week, uh, maybe every 10 days to 14 days uh, because I don't trade that often. So I'm not really looking for, uh, this is giving me trading ideas and trading opportunities. But yes, if you run it every day, you will probably get the same results, some of the same results uh, daily, but you're going to have some that fall off and some that are added. So, you know, you have to determine where you want to really pinpoint um, your, your searches. So this is one way to do that. And that would be uh, filtering it based on a sector or sectors. So at this point, you know, we're hoping, we're looking, and I, I was uh, interested after seeing those particular uh, candle glances, I, I was interested in uh, the defensive sectors in general. So I'm going to do a, first I'll, I'll take a look at consumer staples, and this is how you can add a sector. It's right down here in, in the components. So I chose sec staples, but you can even narrow it down to industry groups if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go with the consumer staples. That's what we'll start with, and I'm adding that. Now, it always adds to the bottom of your scan, just FYI. So I'm just going to take this to the top. Uh, I like to give the scan engine a break by putting in some of the um, the easier or uh, you know more general uh, scans here or scans, uh, scan code right up front. That's why I say right up front stock US daily volume. So it, it immediately the scan engine can narrow something down um, to a pretty good amount of uh, results and then move from there. So I want to go ahead and put in that it needs to be in the staples sector. Now you notice this little X. That's because you can't start a scan with an and. So I'm just going to take that one right out there. And now let's run it and see how many results we get. So we had 67 before, and now we're going to have a little bit less than that, six. So then you can take a peek at each of these consumer staples. And then before I wrap this up, I'm going to show you one other thing you can do on that is if you want more than one sector. So maybe you want to see all of the um, defensive sectors in here or a couple of them. So let's add uh, utilities. Let's do that. But I want to show you a little bit of a trick here because it's very important to know. So I'm going to add that I want it to maybe be in the utility sector. So again, I like to take these and put them at the top. So I'm going to add that right here. Well, okay, this is a problem with the code and it's not going to tell you this. Can a stock be in consumer staples and in utilities at the same time? No. So in this case, because I'm adding another um, sector, I'm going to put in an or clause. That way I won't get zero results. Run the scan and there you go. All righty. Okay, so that's sort of the basics of sector rotation. Uh, I wanted to give you the takeaways for this, the importance of sector rotation. It really helps you determine what phase of the market or even the economic cycle you could be in. The aggressive and defensive sectors uh, are very important to know the difference between those. I showed you the tools that you can use to uh, envision or see the rotation. And then I did go ahead and tell, uh, show you how to add those sectors to your scans. So that completes my workshop. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at the poll and what you guys use as far as looking at sector rotation. Uh, I can tell you that when I uh, took the poll that I I uh, picked all of them. I didn't use price relative because I don't use that quite as much. But I guess if you are, you know, technically when I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm comparing uh, 
price relatively uh, to each other. But sector perf charts, I don't really use those so much, but I definitely use that RRG, the summary, sector summary, and the candle glance. How about you, Tom? Well, I'm surprised that some of these don't have higher percentages, especially sector summary. Um, right. I start with that every morning. That's the first thing I look at when the market opens, just gives me a real quick and dirty analysis as to what's leading, what's, you know, what's in favor, what's not. Just gives me a feel for the market for the day. Um, so that's the first thing I start with. So that would be 100% for me. Um, only half of you using sector summary is kind of surprising. Right. Well, rotation graphs, I think is awesome. Um, it, to me, it just takes a little bit more work. I use them but I have to physically go in and, and select. I mean, the sector summary is all, it's default. I just use it. I click on it and boom, it's, it's so easy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and there are some, um, there are some things on RRG, I think that are already pre-selected as well that can save some time, but I have, I guess maybe it's more habitual than anything that I just really have gotten into the sector summary, but between of those two, I would say sector summary would be my first RRG would be my second. And for me, it would be price relative. I use that a lot as well. Right. So for me, I would say number one, sector summary, uh, number two, candle glance, and then the RRGs. So if you do want to set up your own candle glance uh, chart style, just set it up the way you want to look at it in candle glance and then just save it as candle glance. And that'll show up every time you do a candle glance. So pretty, pretty important there. All right, well, I thought that was interesting and hopefully that was helpful. If you have any other questions, Aaron H at stockcharts.com and you can reach me with your questions. I'm happy to answer them, answer them there. All right, let's go ahead and move into talking technically. I did a quick uh, peek into the price momentum oscillator and how we use it. So take a look. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Price Momentum Oscillator, or the PMO. It uh, specifically was developed by Decision Point, uh, Carl Swenlin, my father, and I helped him just a little bit with the math, uh, came up with this, and really it, it's, it's different from the MACD, and it is different from the PPO, which most people are familiar with. Uh, we found that when we developed it, that it was uh, more successful in our opinion. And so I want to show you how it works. Uh, you can also go to Chart School and learn more about how it was developed and the math that is behind it. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at the screen right now. And I have a chart of Kimberly Clark. And the price, of course, is on the top with uh, my moving averages that I usually use. And then we have the PMO on the bottom. Now, the PMO is a momentum indicator, as it makes sense and says that it is. Uh, and so it measures, actually it measures acceleration, uh, not only just which direction the momentum is going in, but, uh, and let me explain that to you. So what I have here on the left side of the chart is a very overbought PMO. And it's really giving you warning as soon as it starts to turn over and then of course the crossovers are very important. But that gives you an idea that momentum is starting to fade. Now, the beautiful thing about the PMO and honestly about most momentum indicators is that they are uh, leading indicators rather than lagging indicators like a moving average. And so you can watch the direction of where it's going and be able to uh, really decipher what might be going on with price under the surface that you should know. It helps you to figure out when to get in and when to get out. So over here, like I said, we've got an overbought PMO. It had just turned over and you can see price was starting to turn over, but not really. And once the PMO started to pick up a little bit of uh, momentum on its own and then it got the crossover, it really warned us that something under the surface wasn't quite right, and especially because it was an overbought PMO. So you can see that the PMO starts to fall, of course. Price doesn't really fall at the same time. So that's telling you something right there, that you've got uh, a divergence, as we call it. So momentum is starting to fade, but price is starting to rise, and that should be your hint 
that there's something under the surface that you need to pay attention to. And so you can see the PMO drops and gets into that oversold territory. But when does it tell us to get back in? That was when we would get out. Uh, when do we get back in? Well, of course, the PMO, you can see it twitched a little bit on the way down. But when it finally hit that oversold uh, sweet spot, you can see how it started to turn up. Price hadn't really done much at that point. You can see that it's kind of a flat bottom on that PMO, and it's just starting to come up. Of course, you get the buy signal in here. But just by watching the direction of the PMO, it already gave you a hint that something good might be happening. So in this case, so what happened before this big decline? Well, we can see that the PMO is also giving you warning. The tops on the PMO were starting to fall, but the tops on price were about even. So that's telling you that despite price being a little bit higher, there's something going on again under the surface with the momentum. And so certainly that's what we ended up seeing, that we got that second top on the PMO, which was much lower than that first one. And then we ended up getting that big decline. Now, what is going on over here? The PMO seems pretty flat and un uninteresting. Well, like I said, it measures acceleration. So the PMO will flatten not just if price is moving sideways, but if it's accelerating at a steady rate, like when you put your foot on the accelerator and you just sit it there, you're not going to be accelerating anymore because your acceleration level is the same. And so that's what happens with the PMO when it flattens out like that. Once it came out of that flat, <laughs> that flat area and it started to turn and pick up again, that was your hint to get back in. And of course, leading indicator, it started to top back here and all of a sudden price did begin to turn over. So that's the price momentum oscillator. Uh, like I said, I think it's a little bit better than the other momentum oscillators. And uh, if you want to read more about it, like I said, go to Chart School and you can learn more about the PMO and how it works. All right, welcome back everybody. And it is time for the 10 in 10. First stock today is overstock.com, O-S-T-K. Um, this one I'm kind of mixed on when I looked at it. First of all, volume trends on an uptrend. When I see that kind of volume and the stock's moving higher, that's telling me there's a lot of interest in the stock. It's hard really to downplay that, make turn that into a negative. Um, but after moving higher, I'm, you know, you can see on this last push toward the upside before this one volume bar, the volume did seem to be coming out of the stock. And uh, that is, I'm going to come back to this annotation, but I have a feeling that there was a negative divergence with that. Yes, there was. So as we were moving higher in price, you can see the PPO was rolling over. So that's just telling me the stock needed a, a pause and a reset. Usually we get that at the 50 day test. So I think that this is consolidating for now. I think if we hold $16, we're good. And I really want to get back through this gap resistance up at about 2075, 2080. I think that would be a good thing back to the upside. When you look at the relative strength, um, Overstock's been showing a lot of that for the last two months, but it just put in what I think are important relative lows as well. So I would watch those two lows and I would watch this price low here at 16. I think if we hold that, we'll probably consolidate and move higher. All right. The most popular in the chat room is Beyond Meat, P-Y-N-D. Yeah, I think JP Morgan came out and gave some positive comments to the stock today, which gave it the lift. I'm not sure that that's going to be good enough until we get through that 20-day moving average. I'm just not sure. I mean, it's been downtrending here for the last month, but that came after a ton of outperformance. So I'll give it a little bit of room to the downside, but if we get a little pop, this could potentially be a right shoulder. So you want to keep that in mind as well. Just draw a line here at that, uh, what could be a neckline. So here was your move up, potential left shoulder, pull back, neck, neckline, higher high, puts in the head. We come all the way back down. Notice how as we're moving up, we keep putting in higher highs and higher lows. The thing with a neckline is you're coming back down and testing a prior low. That by itself isn't that big a deal. But if we bounce and we fail to sustain the bounce, come back down and on heavy volume, break that neckline, that would be very bear, or at least more bearish in the near term, and I would not be a fan. I'm not a fan of this one right now anyway. I think it's it ran a lot. I think it probably needs some consolidation. I, I wouldn't consider it unless we get back through that 20-day and 50-day moving average. 
All right, excellent. Uh, the next one actually was my Monday setup yesterday. So people are interested in O'Reilly Automotive, O-R-L-Y. All right, O'Reilly. All right, uh, well, it's been going sideways for a while, which I guess isn't too bad relative to the specialty retailers. That's probably the biggest thing on this chart is that it's starting to show some relative strength in the group. So if the group comes back, the group has not exactly been very strong, but I like the fact that we are seeing relative strength in the space. Volume could be a little heavier on this move, so I don't know that it's a lot of accumulation just yet. But if the group starts to turn back up relative to the S&P 500, then you have one stock here that's at least emerging as a leader in the space. I see maybe a little bit more of a symmetrical triangle on the chart. So if we just kind of go from the highs here and then from the lows down here, to me, it looks like we're squeezing off of an uptrend in a symmetrical triangle. I think there's just a mixed picture here. I wouldn't be rushing into it, but I would take note of that improving relative strength. All right, excellent. Uh, next one up is P-A-Y-S, uh, pay sign. Yeah, this one I think was showing up pretty nicely uh, in the leader among the percentage leaders today. Uh, did pull back a little ABC correction off of a nice move to the upside. I think we're going back up to challenge this prior high. So I'm going to say right around that 19 level. Let me see if I can draw this line right in here. Yeah, around 18, I guess, maybe just a tad over 18. I think that's where we're heading. We're getting volume to come back in on this move, which to me is definitely a positive. But off of this uptrend, this could be a cup now. Um, so maybe a bit, a little bit of a pullback might get an opportunity to get in a little cheaper. But I do like the overall strength here, and it's in a great space, specialty finance. If you, as you go through here, you can see this has been one of the strongest areas relative to the S&P. This is a strong stock with good volume. I think eventually we make the breakout. All right. Next one up is uh, Toll Brothers. Well, Toll Brothers does report right after the bell. Um, and so that's going to be something to keep in mind and watch pretty closely. Uh, but uh, might be breaking out here of this trend line. So let's just draw that on here and take a quick look. But I'm looking at these highs right in here. And you see how this is a little bit of movement to the upside. If we can confirm that with a good solid earnings report, then I'd feel a lot better. To the downside, watch some of the, the key support. And I would maybe say from there up to about there, 33.80 to about 34 and a half. We've had multiple tests in this area. So I would watch that. Notice that was the prior resistance before we broke out to the upside. If there's one concern about this report, look at how Toll Brothers is reporting or is uh, has been performing relative to the home building group. Not very well. So this has been a weaker link within the group. If this comes in with a strong report, that would certainly help home builders. All right. Uh, let's see. Edwards Life Sciences, EW. Love the stock. Um, yeah, I think this one uh, is, is going to go higher. It's in that medical equipment space. It broke out yesterday. It had gapped up here with really strong earnings. Um, you can see the relative strength versus medical supplies is incredibly strong. The big problem is the medical supplies group themselves relative to the S&P. So you've got a really good stock within a not so great area, but it continues to break out. It's got good volume. I think it continues. And if medical, medical supplies as a group ever turns back to the upside, I think that would really add some momentum here to the stock. So I think EW is a winner, is a winner going forward. All right, excellent. Uh, next one up is Cerner, C-E-R-N. All right, C-E-R-N. Um, well, it's trending lower, but I don't know that it's, well, kind of got mixed. You know, you got medical equipment going crazy. Cerner, though, last three months has actually been declining a little bit. Uh, I'd like to see some more volume come in and a real definitive move back above that 50-day moving average. Probably until I see that, I'd be a little cautious, maybe look in other areas. I mentioned uh, Medtronic earlier, MDT. I think that's one that I would consider maybe ahead of something like Cerner at this point. Um, not that it's been a bad stock. I just think that there's uh, enough question marks here that I might look elsewhere until we get a definitive break. Uh, maybe that reaction high up around 74. Recent lows tested the low back in June. So you can see here, double bottom coming back down to that low. I think it's in this trading range. Let's see which way it breaks first. 
All righty, let's see. The next one up is Ulta. I think I knocked over all those young ladies when I walked in there and said, help me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, yeah, Ulta, I haven't looked at in a while. It is also in that specialty retail group, which has struggled. And I think that's hurt Ulta, although Ulta, I believe, still remains one of the better stocks within the space. So the group has been completely falling apart um, on an absolute basis and a relative basis. But you've got gap support right here from this huge gap up back in March. And after the big volume selling in May, I think this is a key area to watch to the downside. I'm okay with Alta unless we break below that. All right. Let's see. The next one I have for you is one we haven't uh, looked at that I know of is Valvoline, VVV. Yeah, this one came out with really strong earnings recently. Nice uh, big move up with that heavy, uh, well, with the gap up, heavy volume, breaking out above prior highs. I think this one actually looks pretty good. Um, it is uh, performing really well relative to the or to its peers and also versus the S&P. It's at about a six, seven month high. So I think the stock looks pretty good. I would just be watching on any pullback. I think the top of gap support holds. So I think you might potentially see it back down around 21. But to me, that would be an opportunity. All right. And the final one is going to be ITA, and that is the Aerospace and Defense ETF. All right. Well, I'm a big fan of defense stocks right now. Um, aerospace, not as much. And I could probably put this over here on a regular chart. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to pull it up on a weekly chart. Let's take a longer term look here. I think we're just consolidating. Look at the tests here, the 20 day moving average as we pull back. I think this st still looks really good. Um, if I owned it, I would hold on to it. And maybe, uh, you know, if we went back down below recent support, I'm going to say that this low, maybe even this low, I think that's a range that I would watch the downside. But as long as that holds, I would be okay with ITA going forward. All right. That is 10. So we are done. That was really good, Tom. You finished that very quickly. Uh, there are the list of symbols that Tom just annotated for you. And it is now time to conclude this show. <laughs> Yeah, and I, you know the market's hanging in there today. Um, you know, when I, I take a look at the chart here, you can see that uh, the Dow, after being down earlier today, close to 100 points, came back, rallied, pulled back, but it's just been consolidating. Uh, currently, let's see, let's get an update here on the Nasdaq. Um, yeah, maybe I can do it a little bit better this way. Like, take a look at the chart, see what's going on. Um, yeah, we're down nine points here. Holding that 20-day, though, yesterday was pretty big in that both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 were able to climb back above their 20-day moving average. I thought that was good. Today, it looked like we were rolling over, but now we're coming back up. I would be watching 2940, I think, on the S&P. That was the kind of where we got to after that huge selling at the beginning of the month. We rallied back, 2940, came back down, double bottom. I think if we get back through 2940, maybe even say that 50-day moving average, I think that would be very bullish. Because my long term is still bullish. Short term, I'm cautious. But if we start breaking back out on the short term chart, because I'm bullish long term, I would be in on these stocks on the long set. What do you think is going on here? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's still so much of the rallies that we've seen have been kind of on the backs of those defensive areas. We're really oversold. It, it's really time for things to turn around. This looks like a double bottom. Um, you know, I, I'm looking for the market to, to continue higher. However, there's just still so much weakness and problems that I'm seeing on my indicators that I'm not going to be raw rawing for new all-time highs. I just don't see it. Yeah, I would just point out one other thing. And this, you know, when I, again, I like to use these price relatives. But if we look back, we do see that the technology relative to the S&P 500 has broken out. And it, on a relative basis, that and the uh, consumer discretionary, the only two sectors that have broken out in 2019 to new relative highs. I think that's bullish, but we'll see. Yep. All right. Uh, there you have the upcoming schedule. I want to thank all of you for uh, being with us today. Um, always a pleasure to have you. Please remember to complete the survey as you exit. Quick reminder, uh, five days a week, Mondays through Fridays. Have a great afternoon, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy trading.